Hey everybody, how's it? Good morning. Oh wow, kind of a cool gloomy day here. A little bit of rain, pretty windy. Uh, my name is Jeebs, I am the decomposer here, and I'm doing a first listen to a song by the band Opeth, uh, Isolation Years. I get a lot of uh, requests on my um, comments and stuff like that, which I totally appreciate, as well as any education I get about uh, the bands that you love within the comments too. It's really super duper cool to uh, uh, find out really super cool inside things uh, from the uh, fan uh, standpoint. Anyhow, I uh, just want to thank everybody for hanging out. Uh, I'm still having a blast doing this. I'm doing it till I'm having fun. I want to thank all of you who've left a little tip for me for a cup of coffee because my channel's not monetized. Uh, by the way, obligatory little uh, saying here, if any advertisements run, they're not mine because my channel's not monetized. They do a publishing uh, copyright claim and the band makes money or the publishers make money when the advertisements run. All right, so uh, we're gonna do Opeth, Isolation Years. Uh, it doesn't seem like a really long song if this is the first time that you're hanging out with me. I'm not doing your basic reaction. I actually bring a little bit to the surface uh, about the song and uh, hopefully for you, the listener, uh, gets a another something something to hang on to when you listen to your favorite song. All right, let's do this. All right. Okay, um, a real super pleasant surprise because the first song I did obviously was, uh, you know, the much larger band sound. Um, first of all, usually when there are songs that are, this is, this is really super cool. Um, I would love to have seen this probably in a raw acoustic presentation like they had, they had some kind of an unplugged version of this. Not that it isn't already scaled down to um, very light sounding, clean sounding guitar work. Um, the picking pattern of the guitar um, is wonderful and it sets this really it sets this really mellow tone it sounds like it's in D uh, that opening chord but there is a note that's constant through that and it sounds like it could be like an A or something like that and what I mean by a constant note is just because the guitar is doing these picking configurations and they're actually moving you can tell the chords are moving around there's one note that rings through and a lot of times in a lot of songs I mean if you if you write a song in a key I'm just saying remember I'm doing this for folks who are just they don't know anything about music so I just want to explain this and just be a little clear about it when 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 you write a, a song in a key there's usually one or two notes that can be constantly through all the chord changes sometimes it's 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 the root you know or the tonic of the of the of the key or something or the root of the key 
Uh, in this case, that kind of pulled me in. Beautiful engineering, uh, nice and clean, not an oversaturation with reverb, you know, a nice wide ambient sound. <coughs> um, another thing is, is obviously the voice in this. This is what I love about what I'm learning about my journey uh, through different types of metal bands and, and stuff like that. This usually is representation of a song that's somewhere in the album structure itself. This is an, this is an, uh, an ebb of a flow, you know, big powerful music. And then there's one or two songs that just kind of wants to give you, the listener, a breather. Um, not be it intentional, like saying, hey, we got to put a song in here that's going to give everybody a break. But usually through the, uh, the journey of the album, there's a couple songs that are going to be less than aggressive or, or at least completely produced and written slightly different. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily sound completely, you know, what I call candy bar all the way through, which is just raw, you know. Um, vocals sound just absolutely beautiful. I love in the hook, they have that, um, I guess there is a keyboard player in this band, because uh, I've been starting to do a little research, so that the very long notes that are being held behind it in the hook and stuff like that. Very nice, but not wimpy. <laughs> okay, so you could do string, you could do little pads and long holding, you know, soundscape or, or hybrid uh, soundscape pads that are long and lush and stuff. But this one adds still a little bit of an edge to it, I think, to keep the context to the band and stuff. And, uh, and then another thing is, is if you notice the engineering is different now in a song like this. Guitars and vocals are a little more up front, the drums are pushed back a little more. Uh, because it's, it's always a little bit of a battle once, you know, you start taking, you know, you turn the volume amp, the, the, um, the overdrive or the volume of the amps down from 11 to 2. You know, you have to approach your engineering different. Anyhow, I'm going to step back a little bit, and then we'll continue forward. And uh, I, don't, I think I can get through this whole song without saying anything else. So let's, let's do this. Oh, that was nice. So the engineer did something very unique over there. And um, what happened is, is that as the guitar faded out, it sounded like, um, without getting overly technical, as they faded the guitar out, they left the send of the reverb, which means they left the level of the reverb in place. So it, so it was the guitar drifted out, but the reverb still continue to respond to the signal being sent to it by the guitar, which reverb is in effects, digital delay is in effects. Um, beautiful chord changes around the hook. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the bass and everything is very sauntery. This is a very sauntery kind of, this has to be kind of, like I said, a transition or something between songs in the storyline of this album and stuff. I'm I'm blown away. I'm beginning to find that a lot of these bands that I've been, you know, reacting to for the first time and starting to dig into their discography and stuff like that have songs like this. And as a matter of fact, I've already been thinking that maybe in February I was going to start just an acoustic um, series. So it's still taking our favorite bands, but finding the ones that are not, necessar not necessarily so powerfully 
you know, presented to us with, you know, polyrhythmical counter rhythm, counterpoint, you know, really um, technical or advanced kind of construction in composition. But songs like this, you know, uh, personally, whenever I came across a song like this in an album where I'm thinking, yeah, this is a great rock album, it does kind of reset me a little bit. It kind of resets the journey for me, especially if I'm listening to it all the way through. But those were the days of the album. That's when you did, you know, you started the album at the very beginning, you listened to it all the way through. So today it's a little different, I think, uh, than uh, back then. But anyhow, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much once again, uh, you know, for the, if you guys want to tip me or something like that. Uh, the link is down there below. The headsets, AKG 240s, the link is below. Discography and also Spotify and music for Opeth will also be down below. So thanks for hanging out. I got a couple more coming at you today because it's kind of rainy and gloomy. So I'm feeling like I'm, I'm going to knock a few of these things out. All right. I'll see you guys.